शतान प्रसंगा हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज एंड वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन हाउ आर यू डूइंग I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. So we're moving on to the second part of the letter today. Uh this was the letter if you remember from Hamsa Duta Prabhu and Prabhupada had written to him uh about some points of leader leadership and also some philosophical points. So we continuing with his letter today and it's quite a very interesting one very informative very educational so let's continue so we catch it at this paragraph that starts regarding the examination you are already a past student so don't be afraid of it <laughs> i'm aware that uh, his holiness bhakti chaitanya swami maharaj is doing uh, online uh, bhagavad gita course and lots of devotees have signed up for it and lots more should sign up for it uh, because maharaj is one of the best teachers we have in this con of the bhagavad gita is extremely knowledgeable and uh, you really benefit tremendously from his deep wisdom on the text So some of the devotees who are taking it up uh, have contacted me Prabhu what do we how do we answer this and we got questions <laughs> and we have assignments and oh we have to learn the shlokas Prabhu how we should learn the shlokas <laughs> So it was very nice to get those messages and I'm very encouraged by it and certainly I can try and assist you uh, wherever possible So Prabhupada is saying here though don't worry about the exams uh, don't be anxiety about it when you there Krishna will reveal uh, it's not a matter of academic text it's not a matter of any academic study it's spiritual knowledge it's very different prabhupad goes on to explain that when the examination will be held you will find the questions so easy that within a few minutes you shall be able to answer all of them <laughs> so prabhupad is encouraging like a grandfather don't worry beta don't worry it will be okay and krishna will help you out Uh, you'll be able to answer all of them in a few minutes uh provided you put the effort into study yes and trying to understand krishna says in gita that one who studies this text worships me by his intelligence so it's a form of worship hmm? so very wonderful prabhupada encourages all the students and this brings up a very important point as well which prabhupada goes on to talk about here i wish to introduce this examination system so in the future our students may not remain unconcerned with these books we are publishing so prabhupada was very concerned that we take time out to study these books he would say i wrote these books not for distributing i wrote it for you So if you don't read about it you don't learn about bhakti how will you know about bhakti you have to learn about it you'll have to read about it you have to hear about it so it is a defect that we have hmm, uh, within our society that many of our devotees don't take out the time hmm, to read prabhupada's books it's not the same it's not the same as reading a facebook article or reading a uh some you know social media stuff that you doing in your relaxing time it's not the same as taking out time actually this is one of the angas of deity worship as well swadhyaya to take out time to study the books don't just do the deity worship no you need to take out time to study the book so you know what you're doing so you don't relate to the deity as an idol hmm? you relate to the deity as a person 
So Prabhupada is, is very, you know, he's is, is, is actually a little disappointed that not enough devotees are taking interest in what he is writing. They are very eager to serve, they are very eager to do service, but to learn and to read and hear Bhagavad Gita and read the scripture, they got no taste for that. So Prabhupada is saying, I'm writing all these books for what then? <laughs> it's a very important point. We should really consider that deeply. Prabhupada goes on to say, these books are not material knowledge. To a sincere student, all of the contents of these books become revealed from within, even if he has not thoroughly studied them all. So he's saying, don't underestimate these books. I'm remembering when Prabhupada landed in Delhi and all the reporters and everyone was there and Tejas Prabhu came to receive Prabhupada and he had a beautiful garland in his hand. And as Prabhupada came towards him, he said, stop, because he was just about to garland Prabhupada and Prabhupada said, stop. Did you put the money of the book money into the book fund? And he was like, yes, Prabhupada, we've transferred the money. Okay, you can garland now. And then he put the garland on Prabhupada. So before anything else, books. Prabhupada wanted to know about the books, whether you sorted out the payment on the books. So it was very important to him, the books. And if something, and think about it, he's taken the time to sacrifice his sleep. Uh, two hours a day, who can function on two hours of sleep a day? but he would just function on that, just so that he can produce more books for us. And he's done all that sacrifice and we don't take the time to read it. That's not love. Hmm? So think about it carefully. Prabhupada goes on to say here, regarding your question, the deity shall, regarding your question, the deity shall be put to rest in time and if people are still eating prasadam, the arti cannot be performed. So he has a situation here. They have one, you know, one temple room which they use for many different things. So they also serve prasadam there. So what happens now when devotees are taking prasad and uh, the arti has to go on? So Prabhupada is advising, no, you cannot be sitting and taking prasad when Krishna is giving darshan there. It's, it's uh, not respectful. During the arti, you should be facing Krishna and taking darshan of Krishna. So that's not the time for taking prasadam. So Prabhupada is advising here. So he said, because we may have seen that in the temples, you've seen how uh, certain temples, I remember Durban temple in the early days, in the 90s, uh, we, Sunday, uh, we, Sunday prasadam, and uh, Wednesday prasadam, we used to take in the temple room. So we used to sit down in rows, even in Cape Town we did that, sit down in rows in the temple room, where else to serve? <laughs> yes, so Prabhupada is advising what to do if the arti has to go on at the same time. So Prabhupada is saying here, it's better after offering prasadam to the deity, you perform the arti, close the curtains and then distribute prasadam to the devotees. So Prabhupada is saying this is what you should do. Immediately after offering prasadam, do the arti. After the arti, okay. So then you distribute prasadam to all the devotees. So Prabhupada is advising, please do not accept from Gopal Krishna six inch murti. He has promised to donate one pair of 24 inch murtis. Besides that, when you are engaged in the worshipment of the temple deities, you may not install separate deities at your home. So Prabhupada is saying here that for those who are pujaris at the temple, it's not necessary to have separate deities. Uh, I know some pujaris, most pujaris, <laughs> most pujaris keep their own deities. Uh, but Prabhupada said it's not necessary because when you start serving the deities, you start getting attached to the deities and then they become like your own personal deities. 
So Prabhupada is saying it's not necessary to change that, uh, to get your own uh, deities and separately worship. The temple deities is like your own deities. Hmm? So because you're so absorbed in the temple pujari service, where will you have time? Oof, where will you have time? It will be very, very difficult. I remember in Vrindavan, Aindra Prabhu had uh, Oof, he, he had a thousand, I think a thousand or two thousand shaligrams. And he would do his puja every day. It takes about eight hours to do the seva. For each one, he would wash them, oil them, and put them back, put tulsi, chandan. Each one, every day, he would do. And still, he would come on the altar and dress the deities as well, Radhe Sham. But uh, his main service was that that he used to do. Eight hours it would take him. And then he would chant also many rounds after that. So he really had a very strong deity worship program. It would take lots of time. So Prabhupada is saying, be practical. Hmm? If you have deities, be practical. Uh, better just worship the deities in the temple. If you are a pujari at the temple and you're taking care of the temple, services. Prabhupada goes on to say, Tears come down from the eyes of a person who is already elevated in ecstatic love of Krishna. So these are very good signs. I am explaining all of these matters in my next book, Nectar of Devotion. So, uh, Hamsa Dutta Prabhu is saying that, you know, sometimes we feel very ecstatic, we feel tears come, the heart melts. Uh, so he's saying, what is this? And Prabhupada is saying, yes, this is advancement. This is the fact. Hmm? Ashru, it's called Ashru. Hmm? Mahaprabhu Kirtana Nitya Gita Varitramadya Manaso Rasena Romancha Kampa Ashru Taranga Bajo Vande Guru Sri Charanaravindam. So Ashru means tears in the eyes. So that happens when there's deep emotional love, when there's deep love for Krishna. So Prabhupada is saying, but there's a philosophical understanding of it as well, which I'm writing in my next book. That means Nectar of Devotion was not even ready yet at this time, 1968. So you can see, you know, Prabhupada is already preparing for the future books. And he says here, I pray to Krishna for your further and further progress in this connection. Ah, Prabhupada is saying, I'm praying to Krishna that this happens more to you. Mm? And then you become more and more absorbed in Krishna. Mm? When one has the blessings of the Guru like this, it's very auspicious. So we were quoting this verse the last time. Yasya Deve Para Bhakti Ryata Deve Tata Kuru. That for one who gets the mercy of the spiritual master, then all the imports of the Vedas are revealed. Mm? The Shastra says. So Prabhupada goes on to say here. I am pleased to note that you are now accepting outside engagements for kirtan activities. This is an important attempt. So Prabhupada is saying kirtan is our thing. So go out and see where you can do kirtan, wherever you can do kirtan. And if people are inviting, this is so important. Let them hear the holy name of Krishna. Let them hear the holy name of God. Prabhupada goes on to say, Please convey my blessings to Kula Shekhar also. I am very glad to note that he is back at the temple and painting nicely. I hope this finds you in good health. Your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So a very beautiful letter, very heartening, also very informative. And I think it addresses some of the practical things that we experience in spiritual life and at the temple. So I hope you have a good day. Today is also a Kadasi here in Mayapur. So more reading and chanting and less of everything else. <laughs> Hare Krishna.